Right, preparation for Comp 1, Part 1. Uh, well, to be honest, this is very basic, and this is Part 1. And really, if you were reading the emails, you should have reached this stage by the middle of April. Um, if you've picked it up and it's the beginning of May, I hope that a slight bit of panic is kicking in. So this is a breakdown of the skeleton code. What I've done is taken each component from a PDF file that was created and looking at the general functionality. This preparation video actually replaces another one that was for cadets. So if you found a funny, uh, strange um, video called preparation, that was the wrong one. This is the right one. Uh, structuring the program. I will talk more about this later in detail, but essentially you'll see that the program starts with what's called a structure and this uh, requires its own separate explanation at a later stage. It also has a constant and that's number of recent scores as three and I bet you in the exam you're going to be asked to list the integer for one constant at least and this is the constant. What does this mean? Well it's a, a limit or it's a set number usually, a constant, and that means it will only keep three recent scores. Incidentally, as of this stage, I'm recording scores and um, it actually uh, records only the latest two. So that, that's interesting why it's not obeying the constant. But anyway, never mind. Uh, that's important though. You will be asked that, I'm sure, in the exam. Uh, so more about what a structure is later. Let's look at the actual program. This is the actual program of the entire skeleton code the sub-main. And each part of the sub-main I have broken down into a section. The PDF file that I've been using has these lines that break off into different color coding which is very helpful. But I thought what would be more helpful is to look at each set in the main program. So that the main program runs, it has its own variables which is also worth talking about at a later stage. But at this stage, part one, I just want to talk about each component of the skeleton code. And the first one you'll hit is something called display menu. And this is the menu. The display menu is exactly what it says on the tin. It's basically a console right lines of all these different options or menu options. We then move on to program part number two, which is find what they have chosen, get menu choice. And get menu choice is a function. It's a fantastic function. If they've entered in a character, it will then read that character as the choice and return the choice. Remember, a function always returns a value uh, to itself. And so going back there, it's, this is the next part of the program, is to find out what has been chosen out of that. Interestingly enough, the function is a character. It's not an integer. So their choices are 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5. Let me just see if that's correct. No, 1, 2, 3, 4, beg your pardon. And it's asking to read it as a character. There's a good reason for that. There's a good reason for that because a character is obviously a single uh, alphanumeric. Uh, and so that's, they just want a number entered. And this is a quick and easy way to, to sort that problem out if somebody enters in a long number or integer. It, it's kind of like error handling. Um, set the third part is called load deck. Okay, let's look at that load deck sub. And this is now what I created on early in April and sent you an email about it. A simple text file with 52 uh, numbers, digits, a combination of that in one big text file. And that represents the numbers you find in a, a, a 52 uh, deck. Uh, of cards. They're not using stream reader, they're using file open. Do you see that? And they're using open mode. Be aware of that because later on when you create your other text file, I'll talk about at a later stage, um, to record scores, it's, a, it's different to stream reader, stream writer. Can you use that in an exam? I've seen a debate about that on the internet. Can you use Stream Reader, Stream Writer? I don't think they can refuse it. It's in, it's in the textbook after all, but anyway. Um, this is another method, so that's great. More the merrier. Uh, and more about this particular sub. This is a great sub and a phenomenal piece of uh, looping here going on. 
while not is something we haven't done before, so that's very interesting, while not. We've done while and we've done do while and do until, but while not is perfect because it's the antithesis of something. Main program part number four, let's look at shuffle deck. Shuffle deck is another sub which does what it says on the tin. Look at this over here, randomly, okay, we've got a 52 deck card, plus one means we shuffle through it. Look at this number of swaps, and this is a loop, it's called the four loop, okay. Number of swaps equals a thousand, wow, that's obviously a limit, or something to, uh, or a target, that's fantastic. A uh, great bit of code here. Main program part number five, play game. Deck, comma, recent scores. Let's see what this does. Now this sub is fascinating. Deck, recent scores. This sub has a whole lot of variables that basically stores what you chose, what the last card was, compares it to what card you've just chosen, is the value higher, all that kind of thing. And we've got T card here, which was our structure, we'll talk about more later, but we've got a Boolean, and we've got integers, and we've got all this happening uh, to see whether it's true, if it's false, do this, and this is iteration. This is if uh, this happens, then that. That then is basically on the same line. Uh, just for the purpose of showing this particular sub, it's on the next line. Uh, display correct guess message. We're going to go through all of that. So let's go through this particular sub piece by piece. This is the get card. Uh, sorry, back to the program before we go through that. This is the um, display recent scores. A great sub here. Look at that. By val, recent scores, there's the parameter, as t recent, uh, recent score. And recent scores is very important because it links later to something that you're going to be asked to do, which is to record or store the scores in a text file. Uh, going back to play game, play game has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different functions relating to this sub. And this is the get card sub or function. Uh, you can think of subs and functions in a similar way actually, but uh, here it's called sub get card. And we've got um, the count. Okay, so this is going to count for us. Okay, and this is the loop. Look at that. 52 minus number of cards turned over. The suite equals zero. This looks like a reset on this particular. Uh, once you've got the card. Uh, play game. Display card. So this is play game number two. Display card. We've got two functions here. Get rank, get suite. These are the two big functions. There's a case for ranking. Uh, ace is one. Uh, two is obviously two. This is just turning it into text. But it's not just turning it into text. It's the case number. Okay. And rank is obviously how it uh, forms up in ascending order. And look at the get suite. So clubs is case number one, diamonds case number two, hearts case number three, and spades case number four. If I was you, I'd be mucking about a lot with these functions in a separate console app. Uh, I have already, and you can create your own game just from using this particular ranking and suite function. Play game number three. Uh, get choice from user. Get choice from user. There it is there. That's a function. And uh, choice is character. Remember, this is the big part in the menu and the continuation of the menu. In other words, after you've selected your menu item, this is where you have to say yes or no. And your choice is red. And return choice. Remember, that was a little uh, routine earlier on that is now being called. Play game number four. Play game number four is is next card higher. All these variable names are very sensible and they do what they say on the tin. Uh, is the next card higher? Is the next card ranked higher than the last card chosen? If so, true, fantastic. Is the next card higher? That's just deciding if it is higher or not. Play game number five. Display the correct guess message. Well done, you guessed correctly. Your score is now. Okay. So, your score is now and score. Look further on, or further back rather, to see how they work out the score. 
play game number six, display end of game message. Of course, if you didn't win, game over, your score was. Or, he has the if, wow, you completed a perfect game. 51, can you imagine getting through the whole pack, guessing correctly? Um, fantastic. Uh, I would go and buy a lottery ticket if that works out. Uh, by the way, I was talking about a cheat sheet earlier on in the emails, and that was good fun as well, but that's a distraction. You don't need to make cheat sheets for this game. Play game number seven is update recent scores, uh, get player name, um, this is update recent scores. This is important because get player name is another very important function that you're going to need uh, when you put it into your what I've called scores.txt. I've already done this bit of code and I'm emailing it out to you. I was hoping you would do it and email me. Um, it would be great if you could offer what you've done. I'm really excited and looking forward to that. But I couldn't wait any longer. Two weeks to the exam and still nothing from you. So I have done that. Again, something else I've done. You should be doing it. You are the one there during the exam. I'm not there. Believe it or not, I'm not there. So you need to start doing this stuff. And that's very important because now I've got that stored in the scores uh, text file, the name and the score. And those are all the main components. Okay, I've broken it down. I'll send you the presentation, but this is the video, and this is where you need to be. Well, you need it to be here at this place during the Easter holidays at least. There is part two and part three, but probably more on email than video now, as time is nigh. Good luck.